So we'll get the speed date started here. Um, so with Fong's Die Season 2, Tom returns after three months of being away. Now, it doesn't really say how much time you were actually on the ship, but is there any way you can like give us some feedback on how long? I was on the ship for about 10 days to two weeks. That 10 days was really to two weeks. Okay. Passes the time that he can't quite recall, but the gist of it was that he'd been held in captivity for a certain amount of days, tortured okay. for a certain amount of days, and had this ongoing dialogue with that overlord for weeks okay. before he went off. But most of that time lapse is spent trying to get from Michigan back to Massachusetts to report. Yeah. So now with Tom seeing how what happened after he got off the ship and all those others got killed, do you think that plays a factor in how he's managing things now that he's back with the second man? Oh, absolutely. I think he gets off that ship with no more illusions that this is going to end any other way than on the battlefield. Yeah. And that there's no negotiations to be had. That whatever hopes or uh, that he'd harbored about ending peacefully somehow, if there could be some sort of compromise, that doesn't exist this year. He comes off probably more militaristic and more hardened to the fight than when he went on. And interesting transfers between our characters that when. Captain Weaver reunites with his daughter, he suddenly has something that sort of softens that philosophical edge. Yeah. Allows him to sort of take over. Now, with Captain Weaver seeing his daughter again, thinking that all his you know family is gone, and then her leaving, I know. that had to be heartbreaking. Yes. I'm and not so going to give up. You're not going to give up. I'm going to give up. So now you're you're thinking that maybe when you go to Charleston, you think this is going to be a good thing for the second mass, or do you think it'll maybe put a big wedge between everyone? We're hoping. We're hoping. It's obviously it's a wing and a prayer. I mean, we couldn't sort of promise. It was a line that Will's character says to me. You know, we could promise paradise before in those episodes last year, but the sanctuary where we ended up exactly. doing training camps. But I think it's. It's analogous to Oki's making a pilgrimage to California during Depression. It focuses everybody's attention on how giving them something to fantasize about. Exactly. And it allows all those internal frictions to sort of get quelled as we make this one long pilgrimage. Who wouldn't want a hot shower after what? Ten months of alien invasion. You guys haven't had power or hot water, so the the problem is that sounds awesome. Well, thank you. I love the show. Thank you very much. Can you guys give us an idea of what each of your characters have been through this season? Tell us what we haven't seen yet. This season? Yeah. The second half of the season. Yes, second half. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, the storyline with Ben is going through this rapid metamorphosis and being in contact with this potential alien rebel faction is a significant part of the second half of the season. Um, so in the way that I had a little touch of that storyline with Roy's character, how last year, where he was really trying to establish himself as a man and as a fighter and hold in his own right at that total time. Um, with Tom, it's really allowing his son to, to go and fulfill his own destiny. Trust me, it's all going to be okay.